is you don't even need to explain that. It's up to us when we speak. We are sowing a seed into our life. When we speak, we either sow death or negative thing in our life, or we sow life. It's up to us, especially we mothers. I'm jumping up. Especially we mothers, we like, I know our children, sometimes they misbehave. Let us able to control our mind, our mouth. Sometimes they ah, these children will kill me. They will not take knife to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> because you keep on saying that these children, you, you will not kill me, you won't kill me. But see, the thing is that the problem is that the life, the world that we live in is actually a spiritual world. The Bible even say that whatever we, we bind on earth is bound in heaven. See, whatever we say, we don't know the spirit that is around us. When you keep on saying that this child will kill me, this this person will kill me, the devil will use the behavior of those children to, to give a hypertension, isn't it? And that is death. I know it is hard. You know, it is hard to say. I used to, when Dami was young, I'm not supposed to say this. When Dami was a child, he used to like Lego. And he used to play with Lego I, I, so much. I mean, I'm here in the presence of God, I'm not going to lie. And I used to say, ah, engineer, engineer. I was joking, you know, because I felt like he liked using his heart. And then through his, uh, his courses, he chose accounting, he chose bio, but he ended choosing engineering. And he's, he's working as an engineer now. You understand? What I'm trying to say is that be careful. And when, whatever you want for your children, even if your child is struggling in school, please don't look at, at, at what is happening there. You are a child of God. And as a mother, you can curse and can bless your child. I'm just trying to speak to the mothers. And I said this message, this week I've been correcting myself. And you, you, you remember, you don't even have to speak the word. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So sometimes we say it in our heart and it is in our heart we are not saying it. You are cursing the child in your heart. Like I was going back to the fact that even if you see your child is struggling in school or you see the child is struggling in this behavior, rather than confessing what you see, you are sowing a seed. Like I normally say that. I, I, I like in the world that we speak to, our, to faith. Let us open uh, Hebrews 11. Eleven verse one. I want. I'm going to concentrate on that bit. If you're there, at, um, Hebrews, like I said, that our words. I like them, the words that we speak, they're just like faith because you're sowing a seed to the future, even though you don't know. Hebrews 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Because when you're, like I said, when you see your child or even your own life, if you are sick, rather than praising that sickness that you're you having, I have diabetes. But because of your words, your faith, you're showing your seed, you begin to confess that I am healed. You don't, you are not sure you are healed, but because you're confessing, whatever you confess, this as a lady at work, this lady during all the COVID, she was always wear mask. Almost every day, she talk about COVID. She's scared of COVID. If somebody's not wearing mask, she's complaining. But this week I went to work and her friend said, I said, where is your friend? Said she has COVID. What did I say? Because she kept on every single day COVID. And why are you not wearing my COVID? But she attracted that COVID to her. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not laughing. But I'm just giving example that even the, everybody was saying that out of everybody in this place, she's the only one that's scared of COVID. Every day COVID. But so we should be careful. We should confess positive things in our life in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we going to change mothers? Yes. We are going to confess positive things. Yes. So we are going to look at the, the fact we have few facts. 
part about the our words, the power of our words, our tongue. And let us look at it first before we continue. How powerful the words are. Let's open Genesis uh, Genesis one. Don't worry, my I ain't gonna take time. We should finish now. Eh? I'm very, very. Genesis 1 verse 3 And God said Let there be light And there was light What do you see there? <laughs> the word was formed by, by the spoken word God said let there be light And there was light And God saw that the light light was, light was good I'm not going to read the whole thing But if you look at the Bible verse From that Genesis 1 verse 3 to 6 that every the, the world was they didn't have any form and everything was formed by the world. God said, Let there be. And I want you to open your close your mouth today and begin to prophesy good things in your life. God said, Let there be light. Your life may be meaningless, may seem meaningless, but begin to confess in your life because the world is powerful. You may have been speaking negative things in your children's life. I want you to begin to confess good things in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Few facts about the world. Our, our destiny is in the hands of, our, of how we speak. Even not even our destiny, you know the way we speak. No people do judge us about the way how we speak. Don't we? Don't they? If you talk anyhow, people will, will judge you the way you speak. Hallelujah. Number two. Our life follow the tradition of our words. Like I gave the example that I was, I used to talk about that I'm not going to marry a South African, and here I am. My life did follow that direction of the words I spoke. Hallelujah. Even you children are just concerning these children. You are still young. You still have time to direct your path, isn't it? And I want you from today, whatever you wish to be, whatever you desire to be, it may look impossible to you. It may look impossible to man. But the words you speak, it is a seed. When I was a, I'm going to again to talk about myself. When I was a child, I don't know if you know grasshoppers. Yes. <laughs> when I was <laughs> in South Africa years ago, the, 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 the way we used to play is to go to the bush and look for grasshoppers and cook it and eat it you know so that <laughs> I'm a village girl <laughs> typical village girl <laughs> my husband knows my village so we went, uh, we went to the bush to look for uh, for the grasshoppers and then because we used to cut this uh, like uh, something like this and we beat the grass when we beat the grass the grasshoppers would come out and kill it Put it in the bottle and we we'll fry it with oil. <laughs> so that day we were looking for the grasshoppers for a very long time and there was no grasshopper. And I said, ah, we can't go back without grasshoppers. So there was this uh, brother, he used to sing at weddings and everything. So he used to sing one song, it is in my language, I, I speak Tonga. Most people don't know that part of South Africa or the tribe. For more than vegan than that. So this man used to sing this song that Jesus is alive. I'm trying to translate that even in in everything I'm going through, in, it was mentioning things that Jesus is there. As a small child, I grew up in the church, and then I was singing that song that Jesus is alive. Even in, in me looking for the grasshoppers, Jesus is there. I know it seemed like a joke, but I'm telling you, I went home with a big bottle full of <laughs> but it may seem like a joke but it's I didn't take it seriously then but I look at it and said why did we it's like the when Jesus met the, the disciple the Peter do you remember he was toiling the day and night looking for fish and then Jesus said try again but you know like that day I just started singing that song and I was beating the grass all of a sudden, where did the grasshoppers come from? 
<laughs> but because I was confessing that these grasshoppers today I'm going home with you. Do you understand? Hallelujah. <laughs> every word number number what now number three. Number three. Now every word we say is an empowerment to something. Do you get it? If you are yes, whatever so you you're empowering one of the negative. If you are you are sick and you are saying, oh, this is my sickness, you are empowering that sickness. If you are sick and you are you are saying positive things that I am healed, I am healed. Recently I was nowhere, but nobody would know in church. I would come, but mostly I couldn't go to parties. I was trying to avoid because I couldn't stay long. So the devil is a liar. And I was it had those symptoms of uh, this and not those uh, terminal diseases. And I, I was confessing that. I said, after all, my father died of that. You know, I was confessing that evil sickness into my body. I even went to the doctor, I said, do blood tests, do this. And I was confessing. And then the big blood test, I went to the hospital because the doctor was confused. When the result came back negative, and I started asking God for forgiveness. That even you, with that confession, God was still faithful. That I am not sick. In Jesus' name. Amen. It was that the devil was using those symptoms. Sometimes this internet says, eh? when we are sick, we go to the internet, looking for symptoms. And then we start confessing those things. Because if, okay, this is, I'm feeling like this. This is a symptom of diabetes. This is a symptom of this. And please let us stop. Let us go to the doctor. Let doctor check us. Because we start confessing. I, I check on the internet. So I have diabetes. So. Please, we will not have sickness that is not our own. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Words can speak, can change situation. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be here today, and there's that situation. I want you to practice this message in your life. That that situation, you speak life into that situation, and it will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Because God will even honor our words. Even confess the Bible. Confess the Bible. You know the Bible says in the, I think it's Matthew 8, that when the centurion, he said to Jesus, he understood the, the power. It's Matthew 8, verse 8. You can open it so we can look at it. The centurion, he understood the power of what? Nobody is helping me to read. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. For speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Hallelujah. What did you hear there? He understood the power of words. And he said to Jesus, he, he believed that if Jesus said you are healed, you are going to be healed. He said, speak the word only. That's why I'm saying that you can change every situation in your life by faith and the word that you speak. Hallelujah. Amen. Number, number six. Okay, number five. Sorry. The words we speak with our mouth affect the world around us. We have spoke about that. Number six. Whatever you talk about the most like I said about that, my colleague, about COVID. Oh, there's COVID, COVID. Even when they said at work, remove mask, she kept on wearing mask. And she was scared. But it happened. That's what they say. Even sometimes some people, and then I was talking to a colleague about that. I didn't tell her this is what I'm going to preach. I said, and she said, you're actually, she's a white person. She said, you're actually right. There was a lady here before you came. She was scared of death. The only thing she spoke about them, them, them. It's like she was so scared about dying and she got cancer. And she died. And I never met the lady. So please be careful. Let us be, just try to be positive for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We spoke about the words can release healing. That is number number seven. Now I just want to the last lastly I want to speak to the mothers today. 
I have done so many times. That will be saying, ah, mommy, you're confessing evil in my life. Because sometimes when we are angry, it's hard to control those emotions, you know. Like maybe we mothers or we that are others, maybe our life would have been better. If not our mothers were causing us, you know, African mothers, whether you are from Congo, you are from West African mothers can cause. You see your head. Maybe our life would have been better than if our mothers didn't cause us. Maybe we would have succeeded more. You may be here as a mother, and I'm talking now. You know in your heart that you have caused your child because the child is misbehaving. The child, maybe you're doing homework with your child, and the child is not understanding. You're hitting the head, and you're confessing evil. I want us to be on our feet this morning. Because it's Mother's Day, I'm talking to every single person here that every situation in your life, you're going to speak the word. But I want you to, if the children can be close to you, I want us to pray for our children that every evil word I have spoken, evil words, every negative word, because like I said, when you speak, you're sowing a seed. I know the way I grew up. I thank God where I am today. African mothers can cause. Begin to cancel. I cancel every evil spoken word that may affect my children this day. I cancel every, I uproot every seed that may affect my children in future. Begin to cancel it. Begin to cancel it. Cancel it. Mean it because you are sowing to your children. If your mother is not here, Begin to cancel every evil seed that your mother has planted in your life. You will not struggle in life. Yes, the world can direct our, our life. I know God is able to deliver us. But I want us to begin to cancel those evil seeds. Even in our life, some, sometimes people, see, we women sometimes, we like saying evil words upon other people's children. Begin to cancel those evil words that people have said on your children in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And I want you now to start confessing positive things to your children. Those things that you desire your children to be. Begin to confess. Even yourself as the adult, begin to confess today. That situation, what that thing you are waiting for, begin to confess. It is possible. We are serving a God of possibility. Begin to confess to your children that I confess to my children that my children shall be great. The Bible says that as for me and the children that the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel. In this island, bro, for the children that God has given me are for signs and wonders. My children shall be great. My children shall be honored. My children shall not struggle. My children shall not struggle to feed. My children will not serve one another because even all the stars, they have different glory. They have different glory. So my children will not serve one another. Their glory will shine. Their glory will shine. My children's destiny will shine in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. So oh Lord, my Father, every agent of impossibility, fashion against Will not become useless. 
my children's destiny. You will not become too useless. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say any power of my father's house. Any power of my father's house. Say that my children will not make it. Say that. Any power of my father's house. Say that I will not make it in this land of the living. I command you to die. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. 